Yes, my name is Vera Kennedy. I'm a sociology instructor at West Hills College, Lemoore, and I teach sociology courses, but today we're going to be talking specifically about introduction to sociology. We are using the Introduction to Sociology second edition by OpenStax. We adopted the first edition in 2013, and we've had a lot of success. And when they made the revisions and incorporated Concept Coach, we made the transition with them. Um, on our campus, we have what we call the Apple Corps. We have a group of faculty who are excited to use technology in the classroom. And one of our faculty members had seen an email about adopting OER textbooks. And it was information where you could find them and review them. Unfortunately, they didn't have any books in his discipline, but he saw that my discipline was mentioned. So he forwarded the link to me and I took a look at it and I saw it was comparable to what we were using. So I disseminated it to our adjunct faculty so we could have a discussion whether it was worth adopting or not. Yes, um, once we adopted the text, it actually made our faculty examine um, not just content, but instructional approaches and methodology. And the text helped us refine the course as far as delivery. And so what we did is we created modules that incorporated different chapters of the text. And we created our own uh, categories within these modules and what information we'd cover uh, to make it a little bit more user friendly for students and so that they would understand what information they'd be learning um, as we progress through the course. So I'll give you an example. Um, they have a first module where they just learn how to use the MLS, and that's the welcome introduction. But once we start incorporating the textbook, they would go into module one. And this is where the content of the course is embedded. OK, and so once they enter module one, we have learning objectives that we have taken from the OER text. Um, and like I said, we use different chapters for different modules. So we took the objectives. Uh, that were more significant for our curriculum and that we were going to reinforce with students. And we put those objectives here so the students would see those before they even open the textbook. And then we created another assignment, which is what chapter are they supposed to read? And we, you would find as you went through the course, we'd have this reading assignment for each chapter and it's located in each specific module. And so because we are using the second edition, the second edition has this uh, new supplemental uh, software, which is called Concept Coach. And it's supposed to help enhance uh, the students' uh, reading as far as a comprehension and making sure that they understand the terminology and the concepts as they relate to the field. And so I, we, I have this little assignment telling them you need to go into the textbook and we've embedded the link so the students could click directly on the picture of the textbook that will launch the book and from then we've given them instructions on how to download the book so they have it on their device and that saves time so later if they could be out anywhere and they on their mobile device they can still have access to the textbook and this has kind of become the direction of how we've created the instructional methodology for the course. Uh, rather than us reviewing everything in the textbook, this using an OER um, just made us think about redesigning the course in general. And so us as faculty, we decided to use an approach whereas um, we are empowering the student to read the text uh, to make sure they understand and learn the material and what they're having difficulty or challenges with, that that's what they bring back to us. And we spend classroom time not just reviewing the difficult concepts and terms, but also then creating exercises around those. So I wanted to show that. Another assignment uh, that we created, which is a little bit more detailed, to then reinforce a reading to let them know that, hey, we're empowering you, but you know, we have to have something for checks and balances to make sure that they're doing that because sometimes mm -hmm. we'll come to the classroom and they haven't read. So it makes it difficult to have discussions and identify problem areas. 
So we have a little bit more comprehensive assignment, which is a reading journal. And so we ask them to summarize the chapter. This makes sure that they've actually gone through the entire chapter, not just read a section. <laughs> um, here again, we ask them to identify something new they learned that they thought was important to share with someone. And then the third one, again, reinforcing what, what are you still having difficulty understanding? Um, and if there's nothing, we ask them to take a position where, what do you think people out in the public and society are having difficulty um, knowing the factual information or the truth? What fallacies has society created about certain issues? And we ask them to identify that if they understand the material. So we're still making them critically think about the material. Yes, before, um, and that's just not just me, it's other faculty at our school. Uh, before we adopted the OER text, we, we kind of did everything wrong in teaching. <laughs> everything that, you, you're, that everyone tells you not to do. <laughs> um, we were basically you know, teaching everything in the text to students. We were preparing lectures and PowerPoints and really taking them you know, page by page of the textbook and realizing that we weren't even motivating students to read the text, much less buy it, because we were hand feeding them everything that was in it. And so they would then wait, miss class, wait till PowerPoints or lecture notes were posted, and then just try to read and study those for exams, and then failing, because even though they read it and they might believe that they comprehend it, when it comes to assessments and exams, they were failing those. Um, so it just made us, it helped our student learning outcomes because just using an OER and knowing that it didn't have a lot of the supplemental materials that you get in traditional books mm -hmm. from publishers, it made us create our own to make sure that the materials were appropriate with the content. And to do that, we went to a student-driven approach and that's why we ask students, what are you having trouble understanding? And let's build the curriculum from that. So it becomes very student-centered and student-guided rather than us spoon-feeding information that, that some stuff is really obvious, but also us having a misconception of things that we think students understand and they really don't. Yes, this is the textbook. Um, it's Introduction to Sociology. And like I mentioned, this is the second edition. Um, it is intimidating. When students first view the book, um, it is in volume comparable to any other book available for an Introduction to Sociology course that's out there that is privately published. Um, it has all the major categories and sections. And what's one of the um, major benefits of this textbook, it also reviews the theories in each chapter. A lot of the other intro books, they go over theories in chapter one or two of the text, and then they never return to them or show you how they're applied in different areas of the field. And so this book doesn't do that. It makes sure that it brings up the theories, the major theoretical perspectives in every chapter. Um, one of the advantages of the OER is it helped us reinforce using technology in this room. And as we did that, and we are at Apple campus, it doesn't mean we're Apple exclusive. We do um, use other mobile devices and encourage students to use them regardless of the platform. Um, but what it did is it inspired us to create a tablet classes, uh, specifically where a student could access all information, including their text, course materials, any supplementals, would all be available on their mobile device. So all they have to do is just bring an iPad or a Microsoft Surface or whatever, it doesn't matter the brand, but they could bring that to class and everything that they need for the class is on it. And so what it did is it inspired us to change our syllabus. Um, and we're not the only campus that does this, there are other colleges and universities uh, but it, we embed in here in the information as far as, you know, what you would need, the kind of access to information that, you know, the platform being used would be iTunes U if you're using an iPad, those kinds of things. And we put the apps 
um, that you would be using in class. So even the activities are using apps and they're done in real time. So we might have students complete assignments or quizzes using like Nearpod or Socrative, those kinds of things. We use all the uh, software for documents, presentations, so students create their own. Um, and then we also give them information about, you know, that it's their responsibility in regards to taking care of their tablet, ensuring that it's been powered before class, if it needs repairs, what they need to do with that. So we've added this information to let students know that the investment they've made in their technology is useful and will be used for the course and no other additional, um, how should I say, fees or costs will be incurred for taking these courses. And we created a series of these in different disciplines, so it made it cost effective for students. So your textbook's free because it's an OER, but yes, we understand you're purchasing a mobile device if you don't right. have one, but we've created a series of courses so it offsets the cost. So you could take sociology, health, and psychology. All of them are tablet courses, and there's no other costs associated with those courses other than your tuition costs. The Intro to Sociology, the textbook we were using uh, was, even today, is still over $200. So the cost savings for our students, yes, there are used copies that they could find, um, but we ran into the problem where regardless of the text we were using, publishers were frequently updating them and new editions were the only editions available. Um, so even if we wanted to use an edition that was three, four years old, because there weren't significant changes, it was difficult to do that because we couldn't find enough copies this is a high enrollment GE major course. So there are lots of students taking the course and once they def uh, identify an edition is outdated, it's no longer available in the marketplace. So it made it hard and it wasn't fair either for access because some students, if they knew right out of the gate, they could purchase it at a lower cost, but then others were stuck at paying the, the new price. So yes, yeah, so over $200 we've saved our students in, in purchasing the intro book. Um, I have a couple, uh, some of my favorite ones. Um, students, right away, the first day when you go over the syllabus and you tell them about the textbook, the first response is they're excited. I get claps sometimes because they're happy we've adopted a free book. Um, but then they're also excited because it is a way that then they know they're going to be using technology in the classroom, which, you know, this generation, they like that. They like being connected to their devices. And we found that if we give them activities that are engaging, then in class, on their devices, they're not doing other social media things. 